Hello everybody, Princess the Bear here, and we're back at one of our favorite resorts in all of Disney property. We are at Animal Kingdom Lunch Jumbo House. Yes, Jumbo, Jumbo House. Jumbo, 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 Jumbo. Which isn't technically officially open yet, but the Mara has reopened for dinner. Yes, they were doing breakfast for a little while, and now they started up with dinner again. So of course, we had to mobile order. It's one of your only options at Jumbo House right now, so we're up to see what they got. I missed it so much. Be sure to Hakuna Matata. You heard the girl. This is my favorite restaurant on Walt Disney World property. And the wine is gone. Why hmm. is the wine always gone? I'm gonna leave wine here. They have the largest selection of wine in all of Walt Disney World. And it's gone. This first bag. What's in the bag? I think we need a bottle opener. Then we have the big bag. There's Bear's yard bird. Yes. And falafel with tabbouleh, which I'm so excited for. I miss tabbouleh. Plant-based dessert? No. No? One of them is, one of them isn't. That one's not. Is that a zebra? This looks like a zebra cupcake. That one's not. Kind of burning? That one's burning. Okay. Cool. Behold the plethora that is the Mara. Scumps to the Mara reopening. Cheers. No trip to Animal Kingdom Lodge is complete without a Tusker Lager. Or if you go to Tusker House, get one of these. They are so amazing, they're so refreshing, they're so good. Four and a half out of five hops. Come here to rejoice at the Temple of Tusker. It's been far too long since we've had one of these. I wish there was a place or store or property where I could just buy all the Disney beers and wines. The princess would love that. I would love that. We're never going to get it, but I can hope. If there's anything the first taste of reminds me of Animal Kingdom, it's a sip of Tusker Lager. Four and a half out of five plus. If it was a bit colder, I'd be a five. Hello. I miss this dish. Even though I always thought this dish was like kind of plain, the last like what one or two times we've reviewed this dish, I am so thankful to have it back in my life. Look at all this good. Mostly I'm looking forward to this tabbouleh right here, but I got to enjoy this falafel and the little salad. We got the pita, we got the sauces. Oh, this is hummus right here. I feel like these portions are about half of what they used to be. I'm not sure why. Um, I'm gonna start with the tabbouleh because I've missed it. I've been thinking about this tabbouleh ever since Disney World reopened. So I'm gonna take a nice little healthy amount, really healthy amount. It's just as good as I remember. Not as cold because you can't grab it out of the fridge. But yes, very good. I wish they had it as a side. It used to be a side. Was it on the mobile order for a side? If it was on the mobile order for a side, because I don't believe that it was, I'll put it right here down in the screen somewhere down here. Miss me some tabbouleh. 
No, I guess I'll take some of this salad. It's mostly just cucumbers. It's all, it's all cucumbers, I think. Oh, it's almost like a Greek salad. We have tomato, cucumber, and onion. Persian salad is exactly like this, except you put avocado. Instead of onion. Hmm. Not dressed. Not my favorite. It's just eating raw vegetables, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. If you want raw vegetables. I was just kind of hoping for maybe, I don't know, like a little olive oil on it, maybe a little pepper, a little lemon juice, I don't know, some some spices. This, the Mar is usually really good with their spices. Salad, mm, it's kind of a, a half salad. It's more like just a little decoration over here. And then you got a bunch of olives as well, which, you know, is not my jam. I would give this salad two out of five tomatoes. Now we come time for the all loving falafel. Now we have made falafel on our channel before and I'll put a link to that in the description box down below. Our falafel is pretty amazing. This one is breaded and fried. I'm just gonna pop it open for you here. Nice, thick, dense falafel. It doesn't have a lot of parsley in it. Mmm, but it's flavored so nicely. This is the falafel that I missed. This makes Disney life worth living. I give this four and a half out of five chickpeas. Lastly, I'm gonna go with my little salad sampler hummus. This is the smallest, saddest hummus I've ever seen. Like, really. I can get a better hummus at the grocery store. Or well, gas station, which I would never trust. Hmm. It's a red pepper hummus. But it's smoky, like a charred red pepper hummus. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I feel about that. It's very flavorful, which I enjoy. So one thing about the Mara that they have over so many other places, all this like explosion of flavor. I'd probably give this like a two and a half out of five chickpeas. Not my favorite hummus at Disney. I would rather go to Animal Kingdom and get a hummus. Overall, the plate though, I love the plate. I love the tule. I'm kind of sad that these portions are a lot smaller than they used to be. I'd probably give the whole thing three out of five olives. The serving looks a bit different than I remember it. And mind you, it's been a while, so my memory isn't the best. My memory's not the best anyway. But it looks like they changed the way this is served. But either way, I'm going to try a little bit of it, and I'm going to tell you how I think they meant it to be eaten. But the learn one thing, as long as you live, children, don't let anybody tell you to eat your food. You eat it however makes you happy. It's food. Well, falafel is tasting warm. It's well seasoned throughout. It's not as dense as our falafels were, if you look at our video already. Is that some nice thing too? I actually like the breading. I don't think I liked the breading the first time, but it's not bad. It does, once you start to cut through, get a little bit dry. That kind of concerns me. Overall, I would get a falafel on its own three out of five claws. This little tabbouleh here. A little, little bit, you know, the apprentice loves this stuff. Okay. Definitely tabbouleh. It's me it's missing something. It's almost there though. Probably made with some of the olives. I think it's missing some like lot lemon juice. I even the olives missing something. It is probably lemon juice that's missing. Well, it's a nice solid try. It's average, I would say. Two and a half out of five claws. 
And then you have like this greenery over here. Give that a shot. Tastes like raw vegetables. Now I'm looking at that. I'm looking at the hummus. Is what clued me into what I think they meant. Us to eat this. Because they meant it to be eaten as a pocket. Because they're open. Pocket style. So a little bit of hummus. The falafel in there. I'm sure the princess will want more hummus than that. I'll let her try this when I'm done. Get some green in here. Some tabbouleh in here. I'm gonna leave out the olives. I don't want to gross her out. And you have like a little falafel pocket. And the other one is pocketed too. So I think they just meant you to stuff it and it was just supposed to be two falafels per pocket. This is why nothing's dressed, which makes sense to me now. But I mean, how would a normal person know if you've never had falafel before? This is definitely the way. Four out of five walls. I would eat this on my own. Given one more pocket. I don't think there's enough in here. But for eleven dollars, not a bad deal. I'd order this. Well I guess I'm eating a falafel pocket. I don't really think it makes as much of a difference as Bear says it does. Maybe it's because my bite was mostly falafel. It does give it a lot more flavor, a lot more um, for you to enjoy than just individual like ingredient flavor thingies. I think the pocket I would still give the same. I, you know, three and a half out of five chickpeas. Ask not what your Mara falafel will do for you, ask what you can do for your Mara falafel. I give the unboxing experience one and a half out of five claws. Needs a better peel, I think. But um, normally I usually avoid chicken dishes even though I love chicken, mainly because I don't want to be disappointed. But this is actually not listed as a dinner, but one of their specialty uh, entrees, which got me curious. So you get a half of a roasted chicken, it looks like wedged potatoes roasted, and some corn succotash. They probably should serve this as a side. The princess would devour this. Let's try the succotash first. There's some meanage in here. There we go. Mmm. It's slightly cooked and oiled. The veggies go together nice. Got a little bit of, ah, a little bit of onion, corn, red pepper. It looks like lima bean, and I hate lima beans, but I can barely notice it. I give this three out of five plus. Then we have our little roasted potatoes here. The herbs make a difference. I think they're slightly buttered as well. Nice skin on it. They're mushy. I just wish the skin was a bit more crisp. Three out of five plus. Now we have the delicious looking roasted half a chicken and it's legit half a chicken. Like just cut down the middle, like a little hen. The full size chicken, but you got uh, drumettes, the wings, everything's in here. Let's put off a little bit of this breast. Let's go straight for the juicy oozy. Get some skin in there. It smells delicious as you're cutting into it. Don't don't let me down, Mara. Mmm. No, it's not just basic roasted. There are some seasoning, some herbs on it. it. Gives it that nice deep, like over the fire flavor. It's a little bit smoky. This is like a step up from your store. Uh, 
like a Publix or like a grocery store rotisserie chicken. And it shows. It hasn't been sitting in its own grease. It tastes like fresh cooked and pretty free to eat when the flavor is all there. I am quite surprised, but I can see why they consider this a special dish. For me, it's a four out of five plus. You see that little pink right there? That pink is for the flamenco. Why? Because this is a flamenco cake. We just got a plant-based chocolate cake here with a coconut ganache and, a, and these little, what are these? Dried fruit. Dried raspberry? Quite good, actually. So, here we go with the flamenco. I'm just going to penetrate. So flaky. We got a nice amount here on the spoon. Pretty decent. Hopefully, not too coconutty. It's definitely spiced. The coconut ganache is delicious. It does not taste like coconut. Very light in flavor. Love that. The spiced cake like tastes like you're eating gingerbread kind of, so like a chocolatey gingerbread, which I'm not necessarily mad at. And then with this little like, I assumed you were dark chocolate and you are. A little dark chocolate topping and the, the fruits on top. This is a solid dessert. And I'm not a coconut person, I like this. So I think you win. I mean, the Mario usually wins, they have they very, large and lovely selection of plant-based desserts typically. Them and Sunshine Seasons are, are usually the places to go for plant-based desserts. So not surprised that this one knocks it out of the park, but so, so happy that it does. I will rate this four and a half out of five zebras. It's definitely an interesting portion size cake. If this was a uh, normal size of cakes, I might not hate them so much. But it's very interesting with the ridges in it and this little like pink representation of the flamingo on top. It looks tasty. It looks moist. Let's give it a shot. Okay. Well, the spices are very like forward. With the chocolate, coconut chocolate ganache sort of like balances it out and they will kind of work together. And when you bite into like the fruit, you like a little juice. It actually works kind of well together, believe it or not. It's not too rich, but at the same time, it's not too sweet. Usually, like a nice middle ground of like dense, delicious cake. I'm not mad at this. I might eat half of one of these. Four out of five plus. So, I ordered. A non-plant-based dessert on my own, unprompted, because it just felt a little lonely only having a flamingo cake. So I got a zebra cupcake. Because so why not try to fill out the whole menagerie at dinner, you know? So you have these little black and white chocolate balls, icing on top. I'm just gonna get a little spoonful. I'm probably not gonna be able to finish this all in one sitting. So you have deep chocolate innards, little balls on top, chocolate, even got a little bit of the zebra square. Little balls on top have like a, like a sort of like Nestle crunch for its consistency. Add some interesting flavor to the cupcake. The icing is extremely rich. And the cupcake goes like cupcake innards is just basically a normal cupcake. It's got good flavor to it. I don't mind it. I don't like it as much as the flamingo cake, but I still think it's a nice dessert if you're looking for something to sort of sate your sweet tooth. Three out of five plus. So, that was the Mara. I love the Mara. The food is amazing. The desserts are always creative. 
It's a great experience. I am so thankful that they have reopened. This is always seems to be Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom Lodge being more brave with the uh, sort of non alt meat options. I think the falafel is a great addition to that. Agreed. I like to see them be brave. It, honestly, they've had that on the menu for a while, but I like to see other restaurants do that because it still ranks in one of the top quick service for us in all of Disney World. Agreed, and I always appreciate the fact that they have plant-based desserts. There aren't a lot of locations around Disney where you can consistently find plant-based desserts, and the Mara has always been one of those locations. But we want to know, have you been to the Mara? If so, why not? Let us know in the comments. If there's anywhere else around Animal Kingdom or Disney World period that you'd like to see us go, that's going to be the place to find us. Hit that notification bell if you want to see other videos like this, and... We have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. We will see you soon. Be sure to subscribe. You heard the girl. And don't forget to like this video.